The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has finally gotten a release date, and with it came a brand new trailer giving us an overwhelming amount of story detail. While scouring through all of the new footage, I found a few scenes in particular that caught my attention enough to make a theory. Just a warning, this theory may possibly give away major plot details if proven correct, so please, if you don't want to be spoiled, turn away from this video now. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to my theory. Ever since E3 2016, when majority of the beginning of Breath of the Wild was being shown off, we found references to Hylia. One reference being the goddess Hylia statues found in the Temple of Time, and the other being what the Sheikah monks say after completing a trial. I for one can say I never really thought Hylia would be a very important part of this game until the Switch presentation that is. During the trailer shown of Breath of the Wild, Zelda can be seen wearing the same exact dress that Skyward Sword's version of Zelda wears, who just so happens to be the goddess reincarnated in human form. Trust me, I've got more than just her dress for this one. Come to think of it, we also see Zelda in a fountain. Identical to the fountain Skyward Sword Zelda blessed herself in. Remember those fountains Zelda used to regain her memories? Yeah, those same exact fountains. So is it possible that Zelda's going to regain her memories of being the goddess Hylia? Maybe even her powers? Let's just say I think that's the case here. Once again during the trailer, we can see an example of Zelda's true power as she begins to save Link from a rogue guardian by emitting a bright light from her hand. In an attempt to save Hyrule from the Calamity Ganon, Zelda found a way to regain her memories of being the goddess in order to stop him once and for all. Zelda herself even says, Everything I've done up until now, it was all for nothing. Implying that she set a plan in motion to stop the Calamity Ganon from destroying Hyrule. From the sound of this quote here, the coming of Calamity Ganon was something prophesized prior to the events of Breath of the Wild. The history of the royal family of Hyrule, is also the history of the Calamity Ganon, a primal evil that has endured over the ages. Not only is this most likely a prophecy of the Calamity Ganon, but a mention of demise from Skyward Sword and all of the forms his evil has disguised itself as throughout the ages. I'd also like to note that we have only heard of four catastrophic events in Hyrule's history, one being the Great War of Hylian Demise, the second one being the Great Flood, the third being the Sealing War, and the last is Calamity Ganon. Skyward Sword and the Wind Waker had gods intervene. The Sealing War was taken care of by the Sages and wasn't as destructive as the other two. The destruction that Calamity Ganon has caused is definitely a good reason to resurrect the memories of the Goddess Hylia, if you ask me. Zelda regaining her memory would explain the Sheikah technology found in Hyrule. Hylia was an advanced god who built many pieces of technology found in Skyward Sword, just a few, Fi, Skykeep, and the Guardians found in the Silent Realm. So where did this Sheikah technology come from? Zelda didn't build it all by herself, did she? No, no, she did not. You see, the Sheikah technology is a lot older than you might think. I've made a previous theory that you should go check out after this video explaining where all of the Sheikah technology came from. The gist of it is, is that prior to Skyward Sword, Hylia knew of the return of a being of similar capabilities as Demise. She instructed the remaining Sheikah to build the shrines on the surface below and the many guardians around Hyrule to protect the surface world when needed. The mysterious disappearance of the Sheikah throughout the timeline, even at the beginning in Skyward Sword, and the appearance of this technology leads me to believe this is what happened. More evidence alluding to the Sheikah monks originating from pre-Skyward Sword is their reference to the goddess Hylia. I am but a humble monk, blessed with the sight of the goddess Hylia, and dedicated to helping those who seek to defeat Ganon. This also hints at Hylia and the Sheikah knowing of Ganon way before the events of Breath of the Wild unfold. For now, we're gonna put that on hold. I wanna touch on something else that will bring this full circle. Do you remember when Ayanuma said we'd get those oh, I see moments when going back and playing Twilight Princess HD after playing Breath of the Wild? Do you remember Zeltic's video about the new carvings found in Twilight Princess? Well, if you don't, definitely go check it out. His video's spot on. Anyhow, I think I finally figured out what those carvings mean to the story in Breath of the Wild. Starting with the first one, we can see a Goron to the left, the Triforce in the center, Zelda in her dress, an old man, and Link. The next carving is Zelda, Link, and two humanoid birds. In fact, the same humanoid birds from Breath of the Wild. And lastly, we have Link, an old man, two Uka, and a Zora. These carvings may have had no relevance before, but they sure do now. 
Notice that in each of these carvings, Link or Zelda can be seen. Each one also looks like they are making peace or coming together for some reason. This reason being the fate of Hyrule and its possible destruction by the Calamity Ganon. Why do I say this? Well, because a little something Reggie showed off during last week's Treehouse livestream when unveiling the Master Sword edition of Breath of the Wild. While showing off the map of Breath of the Wild, the Nintendo rep next to Reggie said that the back was the story of Calamity Ganon. On this map, we can see a big burly man fighting off Calamity Ganon, and on the four edges, we see four guardians. Props to HMK for pointing this one out first. On the right, we have the bird guardian. Below it, we have a camel guardian. On the left, we have what looks to be a lizard. And last, we have an elephant. All four guardians have someone standing on them, possibly controlling them, and Calamity Ganon is surrounded by normal guardians. This map is depicting the plan to stop Calamity Ganon, right before he took over all the guardians, including the giant ones. We see many instances in the new trailers where the guardians have been taken over by Ganon, but only one shows that at one point they weren't under the control of Ganon. Specifically during the Life in the Ruins trailer with the humanoid bird flying up to the giant bird guardian. Notice the blue scarf around this bird's neck. It has the same royal blue color Link's champion shirt has, as well as a symbol of the bird guardian, similar to Link's symbol of the Master Sword. This bird must be the driver of swords for this guardian, making sure Hyrule has all of its defenses up in the skies. This bird isn't the only one to have this scarf or sash. But two other characters found in the new footage do as well, and it's very possible these are the owners of the other two guardians out of the four. One is a Goron. He has a sash with the same markings as Link's shirt, and the bird scarf. The last one is what some are calling young Princess Rutella. We see that she is also wearing a royal blue sash, though we can't see all of it in this clip. So this is where those carvings come into play. Knowing that the map shown off during the Treehouse stream is a story of Calamity Ganon combined with the three races having these sashes, it's possible that Zelda asked each of these races to guard these mechs for the inevitable return of Calamity Ganon. After regaining her memories from being the goddess Hylia, Zelda dug up the Sheikah Slate in order to activate the guardians around Hyrule. With the help of Link, Zelda set out on her journey to travel to three of the four regions in Hyrule to ask them for their help. Accepting the task at hand, the three races took the giant guardians but ultimately failed and had them turned against them by Calamity Ganon. Zelda, devastated that her plan failed, had no other choice but to take Link to the Resurrection Chamber and hide the Master Sword in the Lost Woods with the Great Deku Tree. Guilty of the utter destruction Calamity Ganon had caused to her kingdom, Zelda surrendered herself to him inside Hyrule Castle, awaiting the day Link would awaken from his slumber. One last thing I'd like to include is that the Gerudo shown in this trailer didn't have a sash. They have been known to not be involved in the affairs of the kingdom. This could be why we see the Camel Guardian sunken under the sand in the new trailer. With that said, this is my theory. Hope you all enjoyed it. Breath of the Wild is just around the corner, so stay tuned because more videos will be coming. You guys have a good one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.